and welcome to another story time with pump house jr it's miss laurel back with another story for you that i'm so excited to share today i'm going to be reading for you the tin soldier take a look yeah this is so exciting i'm so happy to be back with you guys all right the tin soldier long ago in a faraway toy room there were 25 tin soldiers they all stood at attention in their smart blue and white uniforms, and each of them proudly carried a musket, which, as any old soldier will tell you, is an old-fashioned sort of gun in their arms. They were all exactly the same, except for one, who only had one leg. You see, he had been the very last to be made, and when they got around to him, they had run short of tin, so he only had one leg because there wasn't enough tin for two. The one-legged tin soldier stood just as firmly on his one leg as his brothers did on two. In fact, some might say even firmer. When the tin soldiers weren't sleeping in their box, the little boy who owned them would line them up neatly on a table. From there, they could look at all the other toys on the table. The nicest of these, or so the one-legged tin soldier thought, was a castle made of cardboard. Check that out. I'd like to have a castle like that for all my puppets. The one-legged tin soldier spent hours gazing at that castle. He knew every little tree and creature that surrounded it. He thought they were lovely, but the loveliest of all was a tiny lady who stood in a doorway. Though the tin soldier didn't know it, the lady was a dancer. She was dressed in a beautiful lace dress and wore a red rose made from a tiny piece of tin in her hair. She stretched out both arms and held one leg so high in the air the way dancers can that the one-legged tin soldier couldn't see it. Because of this, he thought she only had one leg like him. She'd make me a perfect wife thought the tin soldier, but she's much too grand. After all, she lives in a splendid castle Why I have only a box to call home, and I have to share that with my 24 brothers, but I'd like to speak to her anyway. So the one-legged tin soldier hid behind a jack-in-the-box that stood on the table and kept quiet. Later that night, when all the other tin soldiers had been put away and the people of the house had gone to bed, the toys blinked their eyes, stretched their arms and legs, and began to play. The other tin soldiers rattled in their box and shouted angrily because they couldn't open the locked lid. The clockwork mouse raced across the table, the spinning top spun, and the toy train whizzed around and around its track. The only toys that didn't move were the dancer and the one-legged tin soldier. The dancer just stood there with her arms high in the air and the tin soldier just stood at attention as he stared at her. At midnight, the clock struck 12 and the lid of the jack in box behind which the tin soldier was hiding flew open. All the toys knew that the jack-in-the-box was something of an evil magician. What do you think? Do you think he looks evil? I think he looks kind of kooky. Don't you know that staring is rude? The jack-in-the-box shouted at the tin soldier. But the tin soldier was not scared and paid no attention. He clung to his musket and stood at attention. You just wait until tomorrow, said the jack-in-the-box before springing back in his box. The next morning, when the maid was cleaning the toy room, the one-legged tin soldier was put on the window sill out of the way. And there he stood at attention until a gust of wind blew him out the window. It could have been an accident but the tin soldier couldn't help thinking that the jack-in-the-box had worked some kind of magic. It was a long way to the sidewalk below, and the tin soldier landed with quite a bump. But being a brave soldier, he
he didn't make a sound. He just clung to his musket and stood at attention, even though it had started to rain. It rained so hard that the gutters of the streets began to fill with waters. Eventually, though, it stopped raining and some of the children came out to play. Wow, look, a tin soldier, said a little girl. Let's make him a boat and send him sailing down the gutter. So the tin soldier found himself afloat in a boat made of newspaper. The boat rocked and swayed as it made its way along the gutter, but the tin soldier never stopped standing at attention, even when the boat whirled down a dark sewer pipe. What's going to happen to me now, thought the soldier. It's all that Jack in the Box's fault. If only I had that one-legged lady with me, I wouldn't be so afraid of the dark. At that moment, the tin soldier heard a rustle and a scratch and a big, ugly water rat jumped out of a hole in the side of the sewer. Passport, please, said the sewer rat. But the tin soldier said nothing and sailed on. The water rat followed him. Stop that soldier, he cried. He has not shown his passport. I don't even think he has one. No one paid him any attention, and the water rat was unable to keep up with the paper boat. The tin soldier was swept on and on. Soon he could see daylight at the end of the tunnel. Then he heard a roaring sound, and before he could blink, he was swept into a powerful waterfall. The boat spun round and round and round as it was washed into a canal below. But the tin soldier never cried out, for tin soldiers do not do such things. The tin soldier stood at attention as the paper boat began to sink. Soon he was up to his neck in the water, but he still stood at attention. Then the boat split in two and the tin soldier sank down through the water. The tin soldier felt sure that he was going to drown and wished that the little dancer were with him. And then all of a sudden, go! The tin soldier was swallowed by a large fish. It was even darker inside the fish than it had been in the sewer, and it was narrower, too. Once more, the tin soldier wished that the dancer were by his side. The fish swam up and down for what seemed like ages, and then suddenly it began wriggling this way and that. And just as suddenly, it became very still. The tin soldier stood at attention and wondered what was happening in this dark, dark place. He heard a strange swishing sound, and the next moment it wasn't dark anymore. Daylight was shining down on him. Hey, it's the tin soldier, cried a familiar voice. It was the maid who had put him on the windowsill earlier that morning. You see, the fish had been caught in the canal and taken to market where the maid had bought him and carried him home. Now that the fish had been cut open by a large kitchen knife, the tin soldier was free once more. After he'd been washed, the tin soldier was taken back to the toy room and stood beside his toy soldier brothers. Everything was just as it had been before he left. How the children laughed and marveled when they heard how the one-legged tin soldier had arrived back home in the tummy of a fish. Everyone was pleased to see the tin soldier again. Everyone, that is, except the jack-in-the-box, whom the children were playing with. Every time one of the children opened his lid, he sprang out and glared at the tin soldier, as if to say, just you wait. But the tin soldier was not scared of the jack-in-the-box's magic. He stood at attention and felt his heart lift as he saw the dancer was standing in exactly the same place as before. He looked at her, and she looked at him, but neither of them said a word. Suddenly, a gust of wind came through the window and blew the one-legged tin soldier from the table into the fire. It's sure to be the jack-in-the-box's doing, thought the tin soldier as the flames melted his blue and white uniform. Then he started to bend as the fire melted his body. A door opened and the breeze caught hold of the tiny paper dancer and blew her straight into the fire too. 
the one-legged tin soldier and the dancers stared at each other for one last time as they both disappeared in the flames. When the maid cleaned out the fire the next morning, she was surprised to find something nestling among the ashes. The tin soldier had melted into the shape of a little tin heart, and the red tin rose from the hair of the dancer was stuck firmly to it. The maid carefully placed the little heart with the red rose on the mantelpiece where it stayed for many years to come. The one-legged tin soldier and the dancer were together at last. Isn't that such a sweet story? They were together after all that time and made such a beautiful piece of art. All right, that's all the time I have today. So thank you so much for joining us. I miss you guys so much. I can't wait until we can make some more art together. Um, but until then, bye. Mm -hmm.